All right, guys, it's Wednesday night. It's a few minutes after seven. Thank you for your patience. I've got a good one. I got T. Hall, number 50, 2008 graduate of the Cougars. How are you doing tonight, Tyler? It's good to see I'm you, good. bud. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing well. I look forward to every Wednesday night because I get to have conversations with Cougars from all different decades, from the 70s to the 2010s. I guess that's how you say it. And everybody in between. And you played for Coach Harris and Coach Stewart. We're going to get into all that in just a minute. Tell folks what you're doing these days. Where do you live and what kind of employment you got going on and those kind of good things. Uh, I live in, uh, in Kentsey mm -hmm. and uh, I work at uh, Dothan Glass. So we do all kind of glass work, uh, you know, custom glass shower enclosures, you know, mirrors, you know, window replacements, all that good stuff. So, uh, you know, working with my hands, uh, I actually got to go get me some stitches yesterday. So, uh oh, yep, yep. I've been uh -huh. doing it six years, so that's my first stitches. So I'm lucky. So, well, I continue to be safe. I hope you're doing okay there, but um, not to get too much into it, but was it in the same hand that you long snapped and centered with? No, no, it was on the forearm. So, no, we're still good. If, if Coach Stewart ever needs me, I'm still good. You got at least one good play left in you. Yeah, <laughs> I actually saw him. Uh, I actually saw him. Uh, I guess it would have been around the, right before the beginning of last season. I was doing some work out there at the uh, at the high school out there mm -hmm. at Abbeville, and uh, I, I mean, uh, yeah. And uh, I saw him out there, and he asked me. Uh, he asked me uh, if I had any eligibility left. Awesome, awesome. But, well, I know he's got he's got it going on in the Beehive. He's doing a good job with that program, as we would have expected him to. Oh, now yeah. I suspect Tyler, you look a little more slender, probably from your your playing days. What was your what was the the height? What was your heaviest that you played at in high school? Well, I was always I was always kind of undersized. I, I, I probably I mean the most I probably ever weighed was maybe maybe two twenty five, two thirty, okay. and I'm probably I'm probably about one seventy now. Well, I was going to say you're you're half a I mean half a half a person or a third of a person smaller than you were from back in the day. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when we get to talking about football and we're around people that didn't play with us, or I sometimes wonder if people think I'm telling the truth or <laughs> that I played center. Just pull out one of those photos of you in your, your Cougars uniform and you can show them. That's right. <laughs> now, did you, all, did you have the beard back in high school, too? I did. I did. I was able to grow it pretty, pretty early, so I usually had some kind of facial hair, yeah. Man, I bet the opponents probably thought you were 32 years of age with two kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right talk, talk to me on the, the O line give me across the the front five your your senior year let's see so left tackle would have been Preston mm -hmm. uh Preston Hatcher then left guard was uh was DR and then me and then uh right guard was uh Therese Salter he was a junior um and um and then right tackle would have been switching out with uh Ross Morgan and Paul Morrow Gotcha. Well, I've got the left side of the line covered. They've already been on the show. I got to keep going down the, the right side of the line. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 I actually ran into Paul Morrow just the other day. I was, uh, I, I had to go by his house and uh, uh, do some work for him. Well, you tell Paul I'm gunning for him. I want him on our show. That's for sure. Yeah. I was Tyler, telling him, you, I told him about you. Did you grow up in Dothan? Did you go to the Dothan city schools? Yes, sir. Yeah. I was, I was born, I was born and raised in Dothan and, uh, my brother is a good bit older than me. He's about 10 years older than me, and he went to Norfolk. So pretty much as long as I can remember, I was a, a, a Norfolk Cougar, you know. Very good. Who, when your brother, what's his name? Justin Hall. Justin Hall. Did he play any sports? He, he, play, he played. He was more of a baseball guy. He did play mm -hmm. some football, but I think, I think after his freshman or sophomore year, year he stopped. Um, you know, he wasn't, he'll, he'll tell you, he wasn't big into the contact. We're, we're you know, we're, we're a little different that way, but. But yeah, he uh, he's an accountant out at uh, AMX Trucking now. Well, very, very good. Tyler, let me ask you in ninth grade, I'm going to ask you about elementary and middle school in a minute. But in ninth grade, when I was coming through just a couple of years before you, we practiced down in the bowl where the softball field is now. It was just a dirt, glass, no grass patch in the hole. When you were coming through in ninth grade, by then, I, I suspect it was a softball complex. So where did the ninth grade practice? 
so I'm trying to think how to tell you. So you know where, okay, the, the convocation center at Northview. If you Again, if, that was just a dirt lot back in the day. <laughs> yeah. If yeah, if you uh if you were looking out towards 431 from the convocation center, just mm -hmm. the, the the open grass field right in front of it. Uh, that's where we practiced, and it, and, and it wasn't much better than what you're describing. Uh, the thing I remember is, is ants everywhere. Well, I'll, I'll take your ants and raise you no airflow yeah. for the win, for the win. Um, the other part, and this is the old man and me telling you how tough it was back in my day. <laughs> We had to run the hill. We had to snake along the side of the hill as part of our conditioning. And by the time you guys came through, I'm, I'm not saying that people were calling your class and the classes around you are soft in comparison. I'm not saying that, or maybe I am. But when you didn't have to run down, up and down that hill, man, that was a game changer right there. Did you ever have to do anything like that? Oh yeah, that that you know that now they have the softball field there, but there's there's still a hill you know separating mm -hmm. the softball and the football mm -hmm. practice field, and and I've I've been up and down that hill many times. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I think even Coach Josh Parrish in 2016, 17, you know, the last years of the program, I think he was still having them run that part of that side of the hill. But I want to welcome. Oh, we got Cougars from all over the all over the place. We got Cam Cobb, Jason Hi. Mullins. Uh, Cam, I know you ran that hill many, many times. We've got Jennifer Ballard, Matheny. Thank you guys for stopping in. I've got T. Hall, and he played for us in 04 to 07 time period for coaches Chip Harris and LeBaron Stewart. Uh, LeBron Stewart. Before we get to those guys, Tyler, where'd you go to elementary? Where'd you go to middle school? Um, so I would have gone to, um, let's see, Gerard Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, then um then wilson street mm -hmm. uh back when it was still you know i, I think that was what uh, maybe th third and fourth i can't remember how they had it broken up back then then back to gerard middle mm -hmm. and uh you know played there for um for uh, mike ferris mm -hmm. um and then coach, and then to northview coach ferris was just just becoming a coach and teacher when i came through there oh yeah what what is gerard's nickname when you came through uh rebels they were still the rebels, but they've changed. I don't know what they are now. Do you happen to know? I think uh, I could be wrong, but I want to say it's like Bears or something. Maybe if anybody who's in who's watching this, if you know what Gerard's name is, because I I went elementary at Gerard, first, second, and third, Wilson Street, fourth and fifth, then back to Gerard, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and then on to to Northview. Yep, yep, same here. Yep. Did, did you play football for Gerard? Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. I played in my eighth grade year. I played there. Yeah. All right. Now let's do a little comparison. Jason, I don't think they're the Rebels anymore. I, I think I think that Tyler may be right. I think they may be the Bears or something like that. I guess I could Google it. We could look that up. Go back behind the school. Where did y'all practice back there in the, the yard behind the school at Gerard? Um, it was it was di directly behind the school. Um, okay. So Same just place. in that big open, yeah, just in that big open field. Now, what percentage of grass versus dirt versus pebbles versus glass during your time? <laughs> oh, it was probably probably an even mix. Now, is was the Azalea Club pool directly across the street as it yeah. was back in the day? Yeah, there's nothing like uh, there's nothing like being out there in a hundred degree weather. You know, mm -hmm. can't hardly breathe, and you're watching people jump off a diving board. You know, having a blast. Or you have your friends on the diving board, you know, saying hello to you while they're jumping off and you're in your full gear for the second hour of the oh, afternoon. Yeah. Just oh, out yeah. there dying. Yeah. See, so it just it's it doesn't matter what year you came through. There's a lot of commonality, some good, not so good. But Tyler, when did you start playing sports as a youth? And what sports did you start playing? Uh, pretty much as young, I mean, as young as I could, you know, as soon as I could sign up, you know, my dad, you know, our family, we always played sports, my brother, sister, you know, all of us played all, all of us played sports all the way up through high school. So, you know, started out, you know, playing, 
you know, baseball. I was never a basketball guy. Never, never. That, that was not my sport. But, uh, you know, started out playing baseball and soccer um, up until I was old enough to play football. Because I think back then you had to be, I think, 10 was when City League started. Mm -hmm. And um, and then once I got into middle school, you know, football became the focus. Everything else just kind of fell off. And what what street, what neighborhood did you grow up in? I grew up um, on a street called Rampart Drive. It's, it runs okay. parallel with Buena Vista, where Houston, right across from Houston Academy. I live right down Buena Vista on Selkirk. I know the area. Oh, yeah, well. yeah. Yeah. And back then it, it was not the neighborhood didn't go all the way to John D. Odom. It was nothing but woods. And that's where we lived. Out in the oh, summer. yeah. I want to welcome one of my former teammates who just had a birthday recently, Mark Saffold. What's up, Mark? How are you doing, bud? So good to see you. You talk about a fine athlete and a family full of athletes. Mickey, his older brother, some excellent ball carriers back in the day. Tyler, when did football get serious for you? Um, I mean, I guess I would say it pretty much always was. I mean, you know, I played other sports, but I always knew that football was was the thing I loved. You know, my, my, my me and my, my dad and brother, you know, watching Auburn games, we all, you know, we loved football and, 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 you know, all I wanted to do was impress my dad and my brother, you know, that was pretty much, you know, like, I, obviously I love playing football myself, but it was, it was always to, to try to impress them, you know. And who were your, your college teams, your pro teams, what players did you follow back in the day? This is before uh, high school. Um, always Auburn. Auburn Tigers. I, I never really. Guys, it's been a good. I'm, I'm so glad to have Tyler on the show tonight. I'm sorry we got to cut it real. No, I tease Tyler. I've got a child who's at Auburn right now. But so Auburn was your school. Who were some of the players? Now I want to say I bet you Gabe Gross came across your radar a time or two. Oh yeah, because because my I think he was a a year older than my brother. Mm -hmm. So I was so, ready to say they should have been about the same time. Yeah, I actually have a. Um, at my dad's house, my childhood house, um, in, in what used to be my bedroom, there's still a, uh, there's still a picture of Gabe Gross when he played quarterback at Auburn that was autographed that I got my brother to get him to autograph. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Are yeah. you and your brother in the photo or is it just Gabe? No, it's, it, it was just an action shot of him. Yeah. When he was playing, yeah. When he played, uh, when he played at Auburn. Well, Gabe has been so, so generous back in the day to Northview. I know that he helped to pave the way for the baseball field to finally get done. You know, we we always played over at, at Westgate at Northcutt Field. We never played any and could hardly practice down there because it was either muddy or too much uh, grass had grown up. It just wasn't a developed field. So we had to hoof it over to Westgate for all of our practices and games that were back during my time. Were they playing on campus by the time you came through? Yes, yeah, and yeah, I think he had. I want to say he he had a part in the big, nice scoreboard that they have mm -hmm. over there. Um, but yeah, it was always a, always a nice field. Um, you know, when we were there, it was all, you know that was one thing. I, I still when I ride, if I ever ride by what you know now Dothan High, but mm -hmm. uh, still hurts me to say that. But um, it hurts. But us all, uh, it I, hurts I always us take all. yeah, I always take a look at that field because those baseball and softball fields are always in top shape. Excellent, excellent. Well, Tyler. What uh, what is it about the game of football that you so enjoyed when you first started playing and, and kept you playing all through high school? You know, when I was a kid, I mean, honestly, it was just football players were just cool. You know, I don't really know how else to put it other than they were just, you know, they were larger than life. You know, they, they you know, they, you know, the contacts fun, the hitting people's fun, all that. But, you know, you know, because everything for me centers around college football. I, I didn't really have a pro team. And, and, you know, you know, you got the, the huge crowds and, and, you know, like I said, large, these larger than life uh, players, you know, and um, I can remember going to games when my brother was playing and I would, you know, I, I, in my mind, I already knew one day I'm going to be playing for Northview. And I would look at these guys and wonder how in the world I was ever going to be big enough to, to, you know, to play, you know, and uh, they just looked so giant at the time, but, but I mean, really, that was, I mean, that was it for me was just football was just the coolest sport. You know, I can't really. I was going to say, were you old enough that when your brother was coming through with that, I know there's a big age gap. Um, were you old enough to go to games or appreciate that? Or was it a little bit later after maybe he had graduated high school that really football came on your radar and you really fell in love with the sport? Well, I, you know, because like I said, when he was, when he was, I mean, I would have been, 
five or six years old. Yeah. And I mean, I already knew I loved football. I already knew I was going to be a football player, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but I don't really, you know, remember a whole lot from those games, but then, you know, even once he stopped playing and once he graduated, we always would go to a game or two a year, you know, you know, me and my dad and him, uh, or just me and my dad once he went to college, but you know, we were always Northview fans. Well, who, whether it's Northview or, or college or whatever, did you pattern your game after any particular players or did you have players that when you watched or went to games, you always made sure that that's who you watched? Um, there was a guy and, you know, ironically enough, being a big Auburn fan, there was a guy that played at Alabama. Um, mm -hmm. He was a center, Antoine Caldwell. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was an undersized guy, you know, in the SEC, he probably only weighed two. I mean, he might, he might only weighed 240, 250 playing in the yeah. SEC. Yeah. And he was, he was quick. And, 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 and that's kind of what I always mm -hmm. felt like we were similar, you know, mm -hmm. cause I was, I was undersized, but, you know, I quickly realized that those big guys can't get off the ball quick. You know, so if I could if I could get off the ball, use my quickness, you know, and have good technique, then I could survive, you know. Well, as you as you got older in the middle school and then high school, how did you work on your footwork? What did you do to make you quicker? Um, I always I always, you know, you know, because when I was in like, say, um, middle school and little league. I was a pretty big kid compared to everybody else. I was one of those that grew quick. Everybody thought I was going to be over six foot. Um, and then I just stopped growing, you know, ended up at like five, nine, but, um, but, but I always had good feet uh, for, a, for a kid. And I, a lot of it was just, we, we grew up, you know, playing sports out in the yard. You know, we had a, a core group of friends, in, you know, in Brentwood in that area. And we were always playing, uh, you know, basketball, playing football, kickball, you know, um, so I was, you know, I, I was always kind of a chubby kid, but we were always active. I was always moving and uh, and and just seemed to kind of naturally have good feet and agility. Um, I remember uh, I remember a, one little league coach having my dad get me jumping rope. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was that was probably the only thing I can remember specifically doing. Sure, sure. What about did you guys ever go up to Westgate or go over to Houston Academy to play any ball? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we would use, you know, because, you know, it's probably a little different now. You know, people are a little different about security. But back then we could just go over there and play on the HA field. Nobody's going to say a word, you know. Same. Yep. 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 We had so many athletes in the neighborhood that uh, we weren't playing in somebody's driveway or in their back or side yards. That's where we'd, we'd end up. And it was amazing how often we found ourselves at Westgate playing on like Beecham or one of those smaller. Oh, yeah. Smaller oh, yeah. Well, Tyler, let's talk a little bit about that transition. You know, it's one thing to play against Honeysuckle and Beverly Carver, whoever it is when, in, in middle school, but then you get up into to ninth grade and it's a whole different ball game. You're at a 6A school. You probably have, I don't know, between 40 and 60 ninth graders on your team alone and you're starting to travel. How did you, what did you weigh if you remember going from eighth to ninth grade, playing on the line, did you have some weight to you or did you have to start lifting and, and eating differently? Um, uh, it's hard to remember. I mean, ninth grade, I probably, I mean, I might've been, might've been 200 pounds, wow. you know, and I, and I always played, always played on the line. You know, I was mm -hmm. a pretty chubby kid. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I got stuck on the, the offense and defensive line and, uh, and, um, and yeah, I, I wasn't very big. And I, I remember quickly realizing I had to kind of make a point to try to, 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 you know, pack on the weight, but it just, it just didn't happen. You know, like I said, the best I could do was get up around 225. I remember eating a lot of peanut butter sandwiches late at night. This is going to blow your mind. You know, you and I were talking off screen about you, you saw some of the videos from the 1985 season. Did you happen to watch the offensive line in any of those games. Yeah, that, that's the big thing that always sticks out to me when I look at, you know, old footage like that is that to me, the offensive linemen look like they should be playing linebacker. Did you happen to notice that the quarterback outweighed the two tackles? That <laughs> yeah, the, you, you both, can't tell both, a whole lot of difference. Yeah, Both of my tackles weighed in the 160s to 170s, but they could get after you, Pat Fitch and Chris Lee. Now I had Kevin Collins, who was one of the guards, ended up playing at Auburn on scholarship, six five two seventy, but everybody else 
I mean, and I was weighing in about the 180s, but when you've got two tackles and then 160s, 170s, you know they got to have some fight in them. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say maybe I was born in the wrong time, but those those guys were a little different breed too back then. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, speaking of a different breed, we got one of the original OGs. We got Bud Young in the house. Thank you, Bud, for stopping by for a few minutes. I'm talking with Tyler Hall. Tyler played in 04 to 07. Talk about Coach Harris. Talk about Coach Stewart. Very different philosophies, different personalities but you had the experience of playing for both coaches. Was Stuart your position coach or was he also one of your head coaches? Stuart, Stuart was my position coach on mm-hmm. just our senior year. I think he came, I think he came in a, in maybe in the summer. I don't, cause I don't remember him being there in the spring leading into our senior year, mm-hmm. but um, I, I wish we'd had him all, all three years on varsity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and Chip Harris came in and, and you know, completely kind of changed the attitude of the program. Well, and if you remember in 2000, Mike Dubos was the head coach. He had coached at Alabama from Luverne or Op area. But coach went 0 and 10 his, his year in 2000. And that was either the beginning or in the middle of that three or four year streak of, of not winning a game. But I want to say, weren't you on the team that helped to defeat defeat the streak? Well, we, we were freshmen. Um, we mm-hmm. we we were dressed out for that game because you know once you know you only played maybe five or six games in freshman. Yeah. And that uh, was one, the, it was the Thursday night against Opelika, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and we were we were dressed out in there, but but I think about the only one that probably played in that game may have been Spencer Pivas. Mm-hmm. But uh, but 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 I definitely won't forget it. I remember. Uh, I remember after the game, the, one of the assistant principals came on the bus and told us that uh, we didn't have to be at school till about 930 because they were going to do it. And we, when we got there, I mean, it was we, you would have thought we won the state championship. Well, that's I was going to say. That was probably as exciting a time at the school in, in many, many years just because of the, the losing streak. But take us to that. Was there a, was there a pep rally or a celebration all that day? What was going on in school that Friday? Yeah, we, yeah, we basically they, they 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 like I said, we got there at about you know we came in late and we met met up and down in the uh, in the gym and you know in the athletic uh, facilities mm-hmm. and they they brought us down there and it basically was it was like a pep rally or or like a uh, like a, a a trophy presentation. I mean, we came in and and people were losing their minds and you're thinking, I know these people aren't normally football fans. Not everybody's a football fan, you know, but right. but but everybody was tired of losing. Well, you know, that was in 2004, and it had been a few years or several years since the team had had a winning record, been to the playoffs, had things to celebrate. And this is a program that from the first year in the fall of 78 coming forward had success. Two state titles in the first seven years, then consecutive years deep into the playoffs. But by the late 90s, early 2000s, the, the program had really fallen on hard times. But for your team, I know you were a ninth grader, but to witness that against Opelika, that had to have been a special time. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't just any Opelika team. I mean, I want to say mm-hmm. they were – I want to say they were ranked pretty high in the – They, in they the were. They were in the top ten. Yeah, and and, and, and I guess they, they, you know, they doubted us a little bit. You know, like mm-hmm. a lot of folks back then, they probably thought, well, here's an easy – easy another victory against Norfew. And 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 I remember it was the, the, the big – the big play was I don't I can't remember if it was a block kick or a or a bad snap mm-hmm. on a uh, on a field goal and um, and John Knight scooped it up and took it about seventy yards for a touchdown. I think he he'd still be running if there wasn't an end zone. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he, that's one of the fastest people I've ever seen in person. Uh-huh. Him and him and Pat Reynolds. Well, another thing, another distinctive thing about your Northview football career is you never lost to those other guys across town. No, nope, not once. Even even both times, and we played them twice in ninth grade. And uh, and yeah, even even in ninth grade, we never never once lost to them. Well, that that really, there's only a few classes in the 41 years of the program who can say whether it's ninth grade, J- JV, varsity, whatever it is, that they never lost to Dothan High. Do you have any memorable uh, times from those games, or are you just general memories? The fact that you know you did lose during that time, those years. Uh, I. One 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 that's funny to me. Uh, we had a guy, uh, Jermez uh, Jermez Thompson. 
Mm-hmm. And he, uh, he had played with us from, from middle school on up. And, and he, um, I can't remember if they moved or something to do with zoning. He ended up having to go to Dothan High our senior year. Oh boy. And, uh, and that was, a uh, you know, we, we, you know, we hated to lose Jamez. And, and mm-hmm. I remember, uh, I remember our senior year, we were beating him pretty good. And, uh, we ran a, uh, you know, he, he played defensive back. Mm-hmm. We ran a, uh, we ran a screen. So, you know, us big guys love a screen. We get to get out in space and block. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and, uh, and I, you know, we've got a convoy heading downfield and, 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 and I've got Jamez lined up. And I remember, I remember kind of taking it easy on him a little bit. I didn't, I didn't want to just, you know, blow him up, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure he appreciated that, but I'm sure also at the same time, you know, he's trying to make a play. You're trying to make a play. And sometimes that gets to be a little, little, little tough in there when, uh, when you're not going full go, but, uh, Tyler, what was it about playing against the Crosstown Rivals that uh, would get you fired up each year? I mean, did you have buddies uh, on the – besides the kid who transferred, did you have other buddies or, or did you have friends that from earlier in school or maybe through sports, you guys actually knew each other? Maybe you were friends. Maybe you had rivals. I don't, I don't know what the situation was. Yeah, we had a lot of mutual friends. I mean, I, I can only speak for myself, but I don't I don't remember there being a whole lot of off the field hostility. Mm-hmm. It was it was mm-hmm. kind of a mutual respect, you know, when it was when it was game time, it was game time. But it there, you know, we we hung out with those guys. I mean, there were plenty of them we went to parties with, you know. Um, so so we definitely knew we definitely knew knew a lot of them over there. And it was always it was always fun to whoop up on them. But uh but what I remember about you know, Dothan High week, the whole week just had a different feel to it. And sure. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it was something in the air, or if it was just us, you know, in our own minds being excited about the game. But I just, I always remember you'd hit that, that Monday of Dothan High week and it just felt different. You know what it was? It was renewed school spirit. Oh yeah. And because you had a common enemy and the school pulled together, but I love Dothan High week. Now, I don't know if they do it now, but my senior year, we actually had a funeral for Dothan High. And in fact, in the pet row, and there's pictures on our, our Facebook group, there's pictures of tombstones with the names of some of the players from Dothan High on the tombstones. I don't know how that would fly today, but it, it didn't work. We lost in overtime my senior year, but uh, it was pretty funny nonetheless. Yeah, I've, I've definitely heard about that, and I, I feel like I've seen pictures because that, that definitely sounded familiar when you started talking about that. But, yeah, we, we never did anything like that. You know, my time, it was starting to – things were starting to change. We probably wouldn't have been allowed to do that, you know. The statute of limitations has run for anything you may or may not admit to in response to my next question, okay? I just want to set that out there. As a youth growing up in Dothan, it doesn't matter your decade. There's a lot of commonalities about getting into mischief. That's the best term I can use to describe it. You don't have to name names, but we'd appreciate it if you did. Where would you guys go to blow off some steam, to just have fun, just to be kids? Were there parts of the county or the city? Did you hang out certain places? As as boring as, as it was back in my day, believe it or not, Cruising around Northside Mall was one of those activities, just in a car. We didn't have internet, none of the phones, none of that stuff. What would you guys do? Yeah, but for us, it was it wasn't the mall; it was Walmart parking lot. Oh dear uh, Lord, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. It's like I just I, I see kids doing it now, you know, in random parking lots, and I and right. it's, it's it's funny seeing it. But that and we we always seem to end up in some random field somewhere. You know, mm-hmm. I can't even I couldn't even tell you. You know, somebody's parents would have land or it'd just be some field we found somewhere yeah yeah well that's the same it'd be right on the outskirts of town maybe going out in the county somebody would have some property and that's where the cars would end up congregating that's for sure some things Tyler some things don't change and no not at all they really don't give me some favorite teachers give me some favorite subjects of yours in school uh there wasn't a whole lot of favorite subjects, I guess you'd say. <laughs> always, always tended to like the science, science type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, I remember, I had a, a anatomy class with uh, with Miss Huff, and mm-hmm. uh, that was she was just a great teacher. She's one of those teachers that can make everything seem interesting, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I don't really know how she did it. There's just something about her, and I, I loved that class. Um, 
there's a bunch of different ones. I mean, uh, coach, coach, uh, coach Griffin, um, it seems that a lot of them are coaches, but, um, but, but, but yeah, I wasn't too, too huge on school though. Well, what, what was it about being a Northview Cougar that made it special for you back in at that time? And even, even now, uh, I, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, I, you know, this, there was always, it, you know, and it goes back to, to y'all because there was, there were, you know, you had Dothan had been around so long and then Northview splits off and then wins two state championships in a matter of years. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, it's, I don't know, it's something I've not really ever thought about, but I, like I said, I was as far, far back as I can remember, I was a Northview fan. We were a Northview family, um, you know, because my brother, you know, being there, my sister, you know, being there right after him, she was two years younger than him. But uh, but but it was it, it was it was kind of like if somebody asked me what it is about being an Auburn fan, I I just am. It just it's just something that has always been. I don't really know any any other way than to be a, a Northview Cougar or an Auburn Tiger. You know, it's just in you. It just is. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Tyler, we we got a couple good. of more Cougars who have joined us. We got Damon Glasgow. Hey Damon, good to see you, bud. And Faye Flowers, Philip. Hey Faye, thank you for. For you guys showing up, we got Tyler Hall, class of 08. Tyler was a, an undersized lineman, but he played a lot. He sure did. And, and I will tell you, DR and Preston as recent guests and, and, and Cash as well, sister. Just, oh, so much fun having all of them on, on the show over the, the last couple of, of months. But what the impression I get from you and from them even though there wasn't a lot of wins necessarily in their tenure, their years, the common bond that you guys had as, it's my term, brothers in arms, if you will. And I know Cash was, a, she's a huge sports fan herself, probably taught most of the cheerleaders what the game was about and probably oh, still yeah. does. But it just seemed like you guys were so very close. I don't know if you were as close with, with them as, as my impression is, but I know being on the O-line, you had to be close. And I know with those guys, with all of you guys playing so much, there had to have been a, a closeness, if, if you will, uh, to you guys. Did, did you feel that back then? Are you guys still friendly today? Oh, for sure. Yeah, me, me and DR and another buddy of ours, Ben Scott, that played mm -hmm. with us, we, we have a running group chat. That's, we're oh, constantly, yeah. mostly talking about NASCAR, but uh, – but uh, but yeah, I mean, me me and uh, with Dr. and Cash specifically, we went to the same church, so we we go back oh. to preschool. Mm -hmm. uh, oh wow, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember a time that I didn't that I wasn't friends with Dr. and Cash. So, and uh, and with with and, and with the rest of the team, you know, most of us went back to Gerard Middle. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when we started playing together. And you know, I'll give Coach Ferris a ton of credit. That's that's really where our our attitude came from that we carried on into Northview. Um, because, you know, I'll brag on our group a little bit. You know, Chip Harris obviously was a huge reason that the, the program kind of got back to, its, you know, winning. Um, but but our we had a really good core group. I think our senior year we had maybe it was high 20s or 30 seniors. So, we had, you know, on a team that probably may have had 60 people um, on varsity, um, you know, we had a pretty good senior class. Well, I was going to say the classes right before yours, it probably was dropping off until Coach Harris came to the program. At the, the first 10, maybe 15 seasons, they're pushing 100 or more on the varsity. We, my, my freshman class, now this was in 82. This tells you how old I am. We had over 70 in my ninth grade class. Oh, yeah. The, the baby Cougars. Now, we graduated with less than 20 because they're just, you know, that's how, not everybody goes all the way through. You probably had the same thing where guys just don't finish uh, all four years for whatever their reasons. But I do give Coach Chip Harris a lot of credit for turning around the program. Um, and guys like you and DR and, and your classes right through there, because those were some dark days before y'all started winning again. They absolutely were. I want you to share, if you and Ben and DR are in a, at lunch together and you only mention somebody's name 
or a particular event with like one or two words or sentences that immediately takes you back to a time or an event that's a good memory for you guys. I know you've got it all friend groups, particularly when you're athletes and you're playing sports together. And I see a little smile coming on your face. So I'm hoping something has percolated, but you know what I'm talking about. Tyler, okay. take me back to 2006 or seven or whenever it was, some event that now when you go to tell that story, it may be partially true. There may be some truth in there somewhere, but some of the facts may have gotten a little hazy or fuzzy along the way. Oh yeah. Man. Not one of those. A, a lot of, a lot of the stories that we get to talking about involve Pat Reynolds. Um, you know, he played, he played some quarterback. He mainly played mm -hmm. defensive back and, and wide receiver and, and running, he, whatever. He was just an athlete, whatever we need him to do. But he is one of the funniest people I've ever been around. And now most of the stories involving Pat, I can't tell. Um, you know, they're just not, you know, you know how, you know, this is a family friendly PG 13 yeah. kind of show. Yeah. But, 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 but I mean, I, I'll never forget. Um, we used to go out to, um, I can't remember whose land it was. Some, again, somebody's land that we knew that, that we, we would go out and go camping out there. And, um, and, and I remember Pat Reynolds randomly tagging along with us, you know, you got four or five, you know, you know, redneck guys out there camping and here's Pat, you know, he was, you know, it's kind of the, the oddball of the group, but, but I, but, but I remember that was one of the, 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 uh, that was one of the funniest camping trips. He, uh, a, a few of us used to, you know, we would, we dip tobacco back then, you know, uh -huh. and I'll, I'll, I'll never forget Pat, uh, decided he wanted to try it. And, uh, and yeah, that didn't go too well for Did him. He get sick pretty quick. Yeah. He ended up, yeah, yeah he, he ended up over there laid up by the barn, you know, uh, he, he wasn't feeling too good. Um, Cam Cobb threw out, could, could one of the places you guys went to called Harrington Field? Oh, yeah, yeah. That ring a bell? And oh, Pat, yeah. he, Cam also said that one of Pat's sayings would be, spat me up, coach. Spat me up, coach. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. assume he's talking about taping up his shoes. Yeah, taping up his ankles and his shoes where it looks cool, you know. Mm -hmm. And Pat was one of the few players they would actually do that for any of us, any, anybody else that asked for it, they'd tell you, Oh, you don't need to be worried about all that. You know, but Pat, you know, Pat get away with it. Oh, that's awesome. Want to welcome <laughs> Jason Keel has joined us. Oh, Cam, you're funny, dude. You're a funny guy. Uh, he's got some more good comments for us. I'll get to him in just a second. Tyler, it's, it's when you remember stories like that to me, it's not about the wins and the losses. It's like what Bud Young just said. It's the battles that you went through together. It's the brotherhood. That's what team sports can do for you, regardless of your sport, regardless of the time period. Doesn't that take you back to a little more innocent time, a little less responsibilities, you know, your youth, the glory days, if you will, that typically it's going to put a smile on your face. And, oh, yeah. and you started smiling when I was starting to bring this up. So I knew something was coming up, but man, those are the kind, the, 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 the camping story. I guarantee if I get Pat Reynolds on here, he's going to tell his version and it may or may not be the same version that you guys have, but that's why I like to hear these stories and these journeys from uh, just different cougars from different, different times. So I, I also cool. remember from that camping trip, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's such a dumb thing, but somehow the next morning, you know, we, we had some, you know, hot dogs and stuff we brought to cook on the campfire and whatnot. Right. And somehow the next morning we got to breaking them in little pieces and throwing them at each other. Why? Who knows? But I know you're knucklehead, 15 year old, 16 year old boys. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're all hitting each other with, uh, with, with pieces of hot dog. And then, and then Pat starts throwing them. Well, when Pat throws them, they hit a little harder. And I, I just remember they started, you know, they started stinging and we're like, oh, this isn't fun anymore. Quit, you know. <laughs> oh, that's that's so funny. That's so funny. Let's talk about being a long snapper and how different it is from being a center. Explain what a long snapper does. OK, so um, so I was the, the, the long snapper or some people call it deep snapper for punts and for extra or field goals, and extra points, which mm -hmm. even those two are different things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, completely different things. But, yeah. you know, it's, you know, snapping shotgun for for center for a normal offensive play. 
is, mm-hmm. is fairly easy. I mean, you can pretty much just flick your wrist. You know, you're getting it five yards back there, maybe seven. I think right. seven was, was what we're set. But, but, but it takes some, some, some technique to uh, – so a lot of flexibility to uh, – especially on punts because you're, you're, you're whipping it back there, you know, 15, you know 12 to 15 yards. Um, and, and it's a ton of pressure. I just remember it being a ton of pressure because, you know, you, you, can, you can mess something up bad in a heartbeat, you know, with a bad snap. Well, well, Tyler, let me ask you, were the rules when you played, could a defensive player be directly over center, directly over uh, straight up on you, or did they have to be in gap? Um, that, yeah, that's actually kind of a sore subject because they weren't supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they weren't supposed to make contact with you until you lifted your head. Cause a lot mm-hmm. of, a lot of long snappers, you're literally looking through your legs and, you know, it's, yeah. that's another way yeah. it's different from a, from a center shotgun snap. But, uh, but that was something that was, was never called. So people did it constantly. Well, did you, did you sustain any injury as a result? Oh, no, no. I, I learned to get that head back up pretty quick. Well, I was getting ready to say it probably wouldn't take too many of those types of collisions for you to learn some technique to protect yourself. Yeah, and I had some good protection, you know, to the left and right of me. I had DR and Therese, you know, because our, our the, the, the line was especially for, you know, punt was a little different because you want some coverage guys, but for field goals, it was basically, it was just the offensive line, you know, as far as the the, the middle five guys. So I had, I had some, you know, they, they'd keep them off of me. Good, gotcha, gotcha. I want you to take us to a Friday night at Rip Hughes Stadium. Did you have particular traditions or superstitions that you always follow? Um, I, I remember the, the, you know, the bus ride over there, you know, it, it would be pretty quiet. You know, Chip, Chip always emphasized, he would, I just remember him always saying, you know, this is a business trip. This isn't, mm-hmm. this isn't playing. This is, you know, right. we're going to do a job. Um, mm-hmm. I remember passing Dothan High and we would, um, We'd give them a friendly, uh, a friendly wave, if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> one of those friendly uh, one finger salutes. Yes, yes, that was that was definitely something that we all did. Um, mm-hmm. And and I think I think Preston may have mentioned this, or maybe it was Dr. But you you really knew it was game time when you started smelling smelling the bread from the uh, from the bread factory next door. I think mm-hmm. it was a colonial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. You you'd, you'd start smelling that fresh baked and, bread, and you knew you were and, close. Tyler, you knew you had an experienced Northview family when they were bringing their own butter or margarine to the stadium. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But uh, and then, you know, once we got to the stadium, I always, you know, a lot of us, we'd, we'd like to walk the field. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't really know what that is. It's just a, a football player thing to, you know, make yeah. a trip down and back the mm-hmm. field. And uh I wasn't a big music guy. I wasn't a big rah-rah hype up guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't, you know, DR loves that stuff. You give DR a good pregame speech and he's ready to go. But uh, but I usually just I could kind of just flip it on when it was when it was time. Yeah. Well, that's everybody's personality is different pregame, that's for sure. But Tyler, we got an OG long snapper in the house. We got Joseph Johnson, who was on that 81 title team, and, and Slim McDuffie's also with us. Thank you, fellas. Some uh, 81 and early, early Cougars on the line with, with uh, Tyler Hall, an 08 graduate. What was special to you about playing at Rip Hughes on Friday nights? Um, one thing about the long snapping that I forgot to mention, I'll get to your question, but it's, it's funny to looking back. My brother actually taught me to long snap when I was young. Like this was like, I, I, I mean, I was maybe play. I, I'm not even sure if I was playing yet or maybe playing Little League. But uh, he told me, uh, I'm going to teach you how to do this. You need to learn how to do this in case you end up not being good enough to start anywhere else. <laughs> he said, at least, you know, you'll have a job there. So that's hey, how that even came, that's how that even came about. Now, do you when was the last time you tried to long snap? <laughs> oh, man, it's been oh, it would probably be ugly if I tried to do it. You give me give me about five or ten. And I, and I bet I'd be I'm right, telling right, you right now. You need to take that skill to parties. You need to take that to, sc- to, to work. You might can earn a little money on the side with some bets right there. Oh yeah, and, and, oh. and now, 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 in high school, yeah, I could, I could, I could put it right on you. I could put it right on your chest. You know. <laughs> well, take take us back to Red Pews. Take us back to Friday night. And what was special for you? Um, well, you know, it was always one of the bigger 
you know, not counting something like the Crampton Bowl, as far as like a high school dedicated stadium, it was probably about the biggest one we played in, um, you know, uh, so that was always a point of pride, knowing we had a, you know, a, a bigger than normal size stadium. When, when was the last time you actually saw the improvements, what's going on at Rip Hughes? I actually, I'm doing some work. I rode by just a few weeks ago and I, I didn't realize any of that. I, I, it kind of caught me off guard because I didn't and realize. And what did you notice? was the what was the field made of oh i didn't even notice that mm -hmm. Are you, it's now an dang, artificial surface it's now artificial turf i'm getting some pictures some current pictures are going to be posted hopefully tomorrow but it's no longer grass it's artificial surface dang we big money now oh you're not kidding it but they're doing a great job that the field when it opens up in a, it will several weeks from now later in in august I don't think it's going to look like the stadium's not going to look like anything that any of us recognized from back in the day. Yeah. I, the one, one thing I remember from Rip Hughes was, uh, you know, we would, you know, for a home game, we would have our, we would have our pants and stuff on already from the locker room at the sure. school. So we didn't really need a dressing room, but we never spent any time in that locker room because it was about a thousand degrees in there. Well, it, take, take, you know, you're so right about that. Unfortunately, coach Parrish, Harry Wayne Parrish, Josh's dad, was one of the, you know, he was the original head coach. He coached me and so many others that first 13 years that he was there. And he had very passionate pregame speeches, almost like you'd see in the movies. You're ready to run through a wall for him. What were Coach Chip Harris's pregame speeches like? They were, they were good. They were, you know, again, like I said, I, I, I wasn't a big rah rah guy, you know, mm -hmm. but, but, but he, he was, he was good. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember one, um, and this may have actually been after the game when he was just after a big win. I can't remember exactly what the situation was, mm -hmm. but we were in that locker room and, you know, the walls were, you know, cinder block walls. Mm -hmm. Well, at the, oh, yeah. at, at the top of the wall where it meets the roof line, there was kind of a little gap where something mm -hmm. could fall down in there. And mm -hmm. he got fired up and was whipping his hat around and threw his hat and it ended up falling down in between the wall and he just, he just lost that hat. But I remember, oh, wow. I remember that was that got a pretty good, you know, that was one of those, are we supposed to laugh here or not? You know? Yeah, uh, I bet that but, was a little awkward minute there. But, but, but yeah, I remember it got a, you know, it was a good break in the tension chuckle, but, you know, because it's just one of those random things, you know, but yeah, he always gave pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good pregame speeches. Well, post game, what did you guys, did you, did y'all have dances? Did you get together with your, your classmates? What did y'all do after the games? Um, I can remember some times of meeting up, uh, okay. I thought I lost you there for a second. I can remember some times I can, uh, I can remember some times of meeting up with people after the games, um, you know, and, and, you know, getting into some shenanigans, but a lot of times I just remember I would, my, my dad would always, uh, he had a little camcorder, you know, a little, uh, handheld, uh, uh, recorder and he would he would record the games and I was usually just ready to get home and, and watch just watch it back you know I mm -hmm. wasn't doing film study but I just wanted to you know kind of you know you didn't want it to be over you know you just wanted to go back and relive it well with the, the parent of an interior lineman I suspect his filming was a little different than that of the quarterback or the wide receiver or the linebackers parents recording is it a lot of interior line play that's on the, the videos? Well, not 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 really. I mean, he'd, he'd keep a pretty good wide shot where you could see everything, but he would he would try to follow. Um, he would try to follow, the, you know, just like you would normal. He didn't. He didn't. Record, he, yeah, he didn't record defense just because of um, space, you know, uh, oh, memory sure, space. Sure. But but one thing I do remember, and again, this goes back to, you know, how electric of an athlete Pat Reynolds was. He always mm -hmm. uh, he always recorded uh, punt returns and kick returns. Just mm -hmm. in anticipation, you never of Pat knew. Was gonna, yeah, because you never, never knew when Pat might do something crazy. Yeah. Well, Tyler, we've got just another, just a couple of minutes, and I really appreciate your trip down memory lane and sharing some of your your stories. Looking back, playing high school football for a lot of us, it's such a memorable time, good or good or or bad, um, but we remember it, and. To a, to a player who I asked this question, I get all kind of, of answers, but my question to you is, what do you miss most about those days, about playing high school football, playing sports in, in high school? Uh, by far, the, the camaraderie, um, the, the, the just the family. I, I can remember, 
every year, and this goes back to middle school, every year when the season would end and, 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 and there was all of a sudden that day where you just went home at three o'clock and it was always the weirdest feeling. It's like, a, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm supposed to be hanging out with these guys for the next, you know, two hours, three hours, you know, it's yeah. just, it, it was always weird, but that was the big thing I missed was just the camaraderie. Cause you know, practice could, could, could be awful sometimes, you know, uh, but you're always going through it with those guys. You know, you're well, never alone. Absolutely. And that's, it's not, you know, it's not about what's on the scoreboard in the long run. To me, it's about those, those brothers in arms who you do battle with and you've gone through all the good and, and the bad with. But what you just mentioned is, at least for many athletes, it teaches you a regiment. It teaches you to be timely with what you need to do. If you need to be sleeping, you need to sleep. You need to do your homework or whatever it is because it keeps you on a schedule. What do you utilize now, if anything, from what you learned as a high school athlete to keep you on that schedule or to keep you uh, doing the things that you're supposed to be doing um, timely? Well, it's, you know, it's funny you mention that because, you know, I always always played football and always had a lot of structure in my mm -hmm. life. But I was also kind of, um, you know, um, what's the word? I also kind of wanted to do what I wanted to do. You know, when mm -hmm. I when I graduated, I, you know, uh, not to get too far down this road, but but I, right. I, I, I kind of played around and partied a little too much and, 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 and didn't take care of the things I needed to take care of. You know, and it set me back some years where I should have been working on my career, whatever it may be, you know, doing the right thing. And, um, and, you know, I, you know, I would have told you that, 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 that I, that I love being free and able to do whatever I wanted to do when I wanted. But once I kind of settled down and, and I, I realized that I actually love that structure, I do very well with structure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one of those one of those guys now that even on the weekend, I'm 545, I'm popped awake and it, it, it drives me crazy if I wake up at 730, 8 o'clock. It, it just, it feels like my whole, I, I wasted half the day. It's 8 o'clock already, you know. <laughs> you haven't even had your coffee and you felt like you've late, wasted that day. <laughs> and, and don't and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to sound like I'm just some crazy go-getter. I may not be doing anything that whole Saturday, right. but it just, I like that structure. I like my routine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get irritated when my routine's thrown off, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but, but, but yeah, it's just, you kind of realize that, you, you know, you, you, you really did, you really did enjoy that structure, whether you realized it or not. And, uh, and, 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 and a lot of it's just, you know, um, as far as things that I feel like are appli applicable from football is just the, the mental toughness, you know, um, knowing that you can go through some stuff and it may be awful. Um, but, but it ain't the end of the world and it's going to be over eventually, you know? Um, so, so that, that'd probably be the biggest thing I, I, I bring with me from, from football. Number 50, Tyler Hall taking us through some of his journey tonight. But I really appreciate you making some time and, and sharing your stories with us. So thank you very much for telling us on Conversations with Cougars. Yeah. Uh, one, one last thing, you know, we, sure. we hated the idea of, uh, of, of com you know, because they had tossed around the idea of combining the schools back when we were there. Right. Um, and, and we hated the idea that, you know, we were enjoying whooping up on Dothan High. But looking back, what I wouldn't have given to have combined our senior year and uh, and had a chance to see what that team could have done with some of the playmakers they had over there. Because they had some, you know, yeah, we beat them, at, but they had some athletes too. And, yeah. and uh, I, you know, especially back then, it was only 6A. You know, it, it didn't like now where they had to move up. We would have still been in that same 6A in that same region. Um, and, and I'd have been curious to see what, what we could have done if we combined those two schools then. You know, that your sentiment right there has been echoed by many classes of, of Cougars coming through and probably Tigers, too, that what could have been if there had only been one. Oh, was, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's but now they hopefully they'll get on track and, and start producing some good teams. But Tyler, thank you, bud. I sure appreciate you being with us tonight. Yes, sir. I enjoyed it. Appreciate it. My pleasure, guys. Keep coming back. I'm, I'm going to keep loading us up with Cougars. Keep coming back on Wednesday nights. Tyler, stick around for just a second when I sign off. But I am looking for Spencer Pibus. I'm looking for Pat Reynolds. If y'all have contact information on these fellas, send them my way, please. Y'all have a good rest of your night. Good week. Stay safe. We'll catch you next Wednesday. Bye.